This is Malcolm341. In today's video, we're going to look at a set of scripts I created that make working with pivots and transforms a lot easier. Moving your object and pivot around quickly while you work is essential, so let's check it out. Okay, so all the new scripts, if you own the full script pack, are right here. We've got pivot, rebuild, face Y, and ST surf, which is snap to surf. So starting with pivot, basically what this does is it's going to take your current selection, whether it be components or object or multiple objects, and it's going to move the pivot to the center of that selection. Okay, so I'll just select my object here, and the pivot for that appears to be centered. So what you do is you click a component. So I'm going to do a face, let's say. So you can select any face. I'll select this one here. And you click the pivot button. And boom, the pivot of your object is now moved to the center of that selection. So you could do it on verts as well if you wanted to. So you could say, oh, I want the center of these verts, which is going to be right there. And then you click the button. And boom, it's just that easy. Your pivot is now exactly where the center of that was. So if you wanted to put the pivot over here, select the face, click the button, and boom, there you go. Your pivot's right there. This can be super handy, actually, for getting the pivot quickly to a single vert, which is what I do quite a bit. So you click that guy, you click the button, and boom, there you go. And then your pivot's perfectly aligned to that one component. That's uh, sometimes often faster than holding down D and V and like dragging the pivot around. What it's really useful for is getting the bottom of the object and clicking the button there to move the pivot there. And then you can snap that back to zero using a number of different ways. You can make sure your pivot of your object is exactly going to be at the base of your object. That's probably one of the most useful. But what's really cool on top of that, if you just click the button and you're in object mode and you don't have any components selected, it will center the pivot to the object. So it's kind of cool. It's like a dual use. If you click it over here, whatever, it's going to move the pivot to the center of those guys. And if you click it without that, it's going to move the center of the pivot to uh, the center of your object. So pretty cool. Save quite a bit of time. If you really want to, it'll work on a selection of objects as well. I don't know how useful that is. So if we select this guy and then this guy and then click the button, it will actually move the pivot of him to the center of the two of them. Looks like it only works on the first selected object, but you could always just do the invert selection if you really wanted that and do that. So now there, their pivot is shared at exactly the same spot. I'll just center the pivot one more time to get back to default. There we go. Moving right along, we have uh, the rebuild button. This is super cool. This is very handy. I use this all the time. This is going to save everyone a lot of time. So often when I'm modeling, uh, my model is like maybe partially rotated or something. It's just like completely arbitrarily rotated to some awful direction. And then I've gone into modify, freeze transforms, and zeroed all of that out. And so it is no longer access aligned. It is no longer object aligned or world aligned. It's just kind of stuck in this gross state where I can't really work on it anymore because when I try to move components or anything, they go like that instead of along the axis that I want to, which would be like that, or like this kind of. And there was a life-changing tool introduced in Maya 2017 to get around this problem that once your transform is frozen, that you can't really work with the object anymore, especially for rotation. Like, look how funky it rotates. So if you press, I believe it is, what is it, D on the keyboard, and then you hover over a face, you can click the face. And that will align the current selection or the current pivot, sorry, to that face. And so what you can do is you can press D again, and then that's pretty amazing. You can now align the object with like the normal of the face. It doesn't rebuild the rotation for you. And so what ends up happening as soon as you click off the object, then it goes right back to object mode. And then you have to kind of either come into here and like go to this very annoying menu. I think it's called custom. Yeah, and then turn custom pivot back on. Okay, cool. So great. We're like working again here. Cool. I can move some verts. Oh, wait, I can't because every time you like switch any mode, it like kicks you out for whatever reason, including object mode. See, I constantly get kicked out. So this is an amazing tool because I can come in here, click this guy, unclick it, and then do like one second of work. But then as soon as I go to do anything again, I've lost what I was doing. So I use that thing constantly, but it's also constantly annoying. So I wanted to see if there was a way that I could uh, make a little uh, tool on top of that to make it so it doesn't constantly kick me out. And I did, but it's a little funky. So I'm going to show you kind of like 
why it's like slightly weird. It works great for modeling, but it's just like a little bit weird. So I'm just going to go and modify freeze transforms one more time. Okay, so we're totally like access aligned. I'm in object mode. I'm going to go into object mode now and see we're kind of stuck along the world. And that's because I've frozen the transforms. And so all you do is you click the rebuild. This is rebuild transforms. You click it. And then after you've clicked it, you choose any component or a face. So I want to say, like, I want to rebuild the transformer along this guy's normal. So you just click the face and boom, it leaves the pivot where it was, but it rebuilds the transform for you away from zero in the world. So it regenerates this transform, but it also regenerates the rotation transform, which the Maya default tool doesn't do. So this is amazing. With one click, I can start working on my model, move it in the correct space. I can even rotate it in the correct space. Look at this. That's amazing. I can now rotate on that axis instead of some wonky made up axis. And when I click off the model, guess what? When I click back on, it's all still there. Everything is still working. I can even move the pivot around and it's still aligned to that axis until I choose another axis. And in fact, it's not a custom axis. It's actually object mode. So this is exactly what you want because guess what? Scaling works as well. So this is like quite a better solution to uh, what is currently in there. And this will work on components, uh, whatever you want. So you click the button and then you choose an edge. And then, oh, okay, all of a sudden now I'm going along that edge. Just move that down there so it makes more sense. Probably not going to use edges. The majority of the time, you're probably just going to use faces. So you click the button, you click a face, and boom, you're ready to go. Click the button, click a face, and there you go. Click the button. This is going to be wonky one. Click the face. And there you go. You're along that axis. I'm just going to click one more time here just to get it straightened out. Okay, I'm just going to move the pivot up here. And then so what is really cool about this is it actually rebuilds the transform. Transform is all wonky now because I just moved the pivot. But if we click the rebuild transform and we choose a face, let's say, click it, it's rebuilt that to be a clean transform. So now if I actually were to zero out the translate, it would go to zero in the world. So that can be super handy in certain situations as well. Now I want to talk about what I was saying earlier, how the tool is kind of funky. In the code, Maya doesn't really provide a way to figure out where you want the rotation pivot to come from. So it always comes on X. So you might think, oh, if I zero out the transform there and it goes back to zero, if I zero out the rotation, it's going to you know, be facing Y or whatever. It's going to zero out the rotation. But here, watch what happens. If I zero out the rotation, it will go to, I think, always X. But basically, you'll not get the results that you might expect. But what is great about this tool is that when you've got that transform rebuilt there, you can rotate off of that axis, which is exactly what you want to do. You want to rotate off that, and you want to rotate off of that. So super cool, super handy. I'm going to use this tool all the time. OK, let's move this guy up one more time here, whatever. And then I'm just going to go modify freeze transforms again. So we zeroed all out. So it's all totally broken. We're all not aligned with the world anymore. So the next tool is called Face Y, and it is a similar tool. You click the button first, and then you choose a component, and it will rotate the model to face positive Y based on that component. And this can be super helpful if you have a model like this, and it's all just kind of out of whack. And you wish you could just, oh, why can't I just, oh, I can't rotate it back because my rotation thing is not aligned or whatever. I really wish that this red square was just facing up so I could work on the model like in the side view as a right angle. And that is what this button does. So you click this button and then you click the face or any component and boom, it says, oh, face Y. And look at this. Now it's all perfectly right angle rotated and it aligns with the grid correctly. This can be super handy for unrotating models to do some tricky modeling stuff where you need the model to kind of be right angled. Or if you rotate it by mistake and frozen the transform, you want to unrotate it. So click face Y. So now the yellow is going to face Y. There you go. There's the yellow facing Y. Oh, okay, cool. Let's do the green. There's green. Oh, there's green facing Y. So I color coded these so you could understand what the tool is doing because the pivot might kind of visually confuse every time the tool runs. It takes your component and it makes that component rotated along the grid and facing positive Y. So if we would like the orange to be facing up, click the orange and the orange is now facing up and it doesn't matter if the object was rotated arbitrarily and then modified freeze transforms was applied, you click face Y, you click orange, and boom, orange is now world aligned and perfect, and you can do all your modeling stuff to it now. 
I can't count the number of times I've needed to open up someone else's model and it's all just kind of like slightly off. And I'm like, oh man, I wish I could just press a magic button and like, I just need to purple to go up so I can like work on this stuff. So now you can do that. And of course it doesn't have to be on a flat surface, right? It will also work uh, on wonky surfaces like this. So now that you can see is perfectly aligned uh, and it'll do components too. Although I recommend just doing face because face is the easiest, but you could align it to this weird access where that edge is now up. So kind of do whatever you want. Okay, and next up we have the snap to surface tool. So basically what this tool does is it's going to take the pivot point of your currently selected model and snap that down to the surface normal of the surface that you select. So basically what you'll do is you'll take a bunch of models here, let's say, doesn't really matter kind of how they're positioned, and you will select the surface you want to snap to first. So select the, basically the thing that you want the incoming things to go on to. And then you select all of these guys. Oh, actually, before I do this, I'm going to move the pivots down of each one of these. And I can use the handy dandy tool that I just got there. So pivot, there we go. Pivot, pivot, and pivot. Okay, cool. Because otherwise they'd be half sunken into the thing. So select the surface, followed by the things that you want to stamp down. Click those guys and then click the button and boom, there we go. It snaps to the closest surface that it found and it puts the correct rotation axis in as well. So if you wanted to translate a little bit along that axis, uh, you can do that to some degree. And the neat thing about this tool is it doesn't matter which way the object is facing. It's going to find positive Y and try to stick the negative normal of positive Y to that surface. So for example, I just clone a couple of these guys out like this, this, and this, and that wouldn't even matter either. Grab my surface, grab my things that I want to project, and click the button. See, it automatically figures out the rotation for you. So what's important with this, and what you might run into that might be confusing, is the object that you're gonna send to the surface, it needs to have like, you know, some good uh, transform basically. Because uh, watch what happens here. So this is the one, one of the ones that I sent over, and it's all good. And that's because it has all this stuff here. So let's say I just move it out, and I go modify freeze transforms. And so see how the pivot rotated there? Now it thinks positive Y is this way, not this way. And so that's going to mess it up. So now if we select this guy, and then this guy, and do the snap to surf, see, it's going to go like that. And so what you want to do when you're working with this tool is you want to look at your asset over here and you want to go into object mode, not world because Y might be in a different direction if you're in world mode. In object mode, when you rotate the model and go to the transform tool, the move tool, Y is going to be the opposite of whatever this little green arrow is. So when you go to freeze the transforms, see how Y is up there? That's why it's not going to work anymore. And that's also why the direction doesn't matter, because if you have the good transforms in here, the tool will figure it out. So you could do this, right? These are all like super wonky. Doesn't matter what way they're facing. It makes no difference. So grab the surface, followed by the transforms, and run the tool. And boom, there you go. It projects them to the surface normal of the incoming surface that you chose first of all. Now you might be wondering, well, that's kind of lame because what about this guy? What about this guy that we froze here and it's all like messed up or whatever. So like modify freeze transforms, but I don't want to like go and rebuild a new model and like fix it all up or whatever. And that's cool. I've got you covered because uh, we can use these other tools that came in the tool shelf to actually fix this guy up. So first of all, we want this to point positive Y. So that's easy. We know we have the face Y tool and just click the axes. Okay, boom, and there, he's fixed. And then from there, everything's all good because now we know when we rotate the model and we go into the move, Y is facing in the correct direction. So now all we need to do is put him in some place where he's gonna snap to the closest thing. So let's say we want him to snap to the top, then we just go that plus that, click the button, boom, there he goes, he snaps down. Undo that, we wanted him to snap to the side, just has to kind of be in proximity so the normal shoots out and they hit each other. That plus that and snap. And there you go. So you can actually like use the other tools that we worked on first to like fix up stuff. 
So here's a fun challenge. Let's fix up both of these objects and then also like snap that one to that one. So first, let's freeze the transforms on these so there's no cheating. Okay, totally messed up. Okay, so select the model first and then press the face Y to enter the tool and then click this guy. Uh, may as well just fix this guy up at the same time. Select the model, face Y, click that guy. Okay, cool. And then I don't want the pivot to be centered, so I'm going to select the verts or the face and click the pivot button. Boom, and then now the pivot is nice and at the bottom. And then this guy is looking good. Let's do, I don't know, let's like align it to like this angle instead for fun. So same thing, face Y, click here, boom. Okay, so that is the flat part there. And then let's try and snap this guy to the bottom just to be tricky. So get him roughly in the right range here which I think is right there. It doesn't even have to be far away. It's just like that one point has to be between the surfaces or whatever. And then uh, select the surface followed by the object. And boom, there you go. The cool thing about this guy too is it works on multiple objects, which I think the snap together tool in Maya does not. Don't quote me on that, but I'm pretty sure it doesn't. So if you needed to do a bunch of these guys and we wanted to snap them down to this surface instead, which is super awkward. This is the things like diagonal, upside down, whatever. Just clone that guy, holding shift to clone drag these guys out. And surface followed by objects, followed by run the tool. Boom, super cool. Love these tools, very neat. If you've already purchased the full script pack or the modeling pack, this will be a free update. So you just need to download the same file again from your original email link to get the new stuff. If you haven't purchased the scripts yet, you can grab the scripts as a set in the modeling pack, or you can get them in the full script pack, so take your pick. Thanks a lot for watching this video. Without viewers like you, this channel would not exist. If you like this video and enjoy the channel, please support me by purchasing something from the online store. Each purchase goes towards creating more video content and keeps the channel ad-free. See you next time. Have a pleasant day.